Daniel Kerr here. Lots of requests about how I set up my last performance using only the Akai plugins plus a couple of uh, sound effects. Um, yeah, I used all Akai plugins for that and uh, I'm going to show you how I set up all the effects and everything, uh, my whole performance paradigm, right? Um, I did add some uh, risers and down lifters and, and a few effects. I'll show you how I set that up as well. Um, I don't think that the addition of those um, just for the sake of convenience really took away from the status as force only or whatever. But uh, yeah, let's get into this. Okay, so here we have the uh, the pack open and I figured I should tell you what's going on in maybe um, a couple of segments, right? So in the first segment, let's talk about busing, okay? Um, the way I have it set up uh, in the force is the same way that I set things up on in Ableton, which is I have all the bases all the way to the left, right side of the clip launch screen. I use session view a lot. Um, and then um, I have the high synths and pianos and everything that's a little higher, higher instruments, any guitars that um, if there's uh, if there's any. And I have those um, next and then I have the drums and then after the drums I have the effects, okay? <clears throat> now, in the force, um, I like to send groups of those, like I like to, to send groups of those to different buses so that I can add one effect to all of that, those types of instruments. All right, so if you go to the mixer, we go to I.O., you'll see. In the first uh, channel one, I have a Reese bass. Channel two, I have a noise bass arp, right? It's kind of a, a, uh, an arpeggiated bass, but it has a little bit of a noise signal in there. Three is pulse bass, which is really another arpeggiated bass, right? So those are my basses, and as you can see, all of those go to sub one. All of my highs, my synths, they all go to sub two. Drums, the main drums, all of my main drums go to sub three. Now, track number, uh, the, the next drum channel, industry drums, that's a, a drum channel that I put together myself. Let's, let's hear some of these stabs. They're, they're heavily affected. Okay, they're mostly just um, thrown in there for a little bit of texture, right? So I put those on a separate um, sub, sub output, right? Put those in sub four. And then I have my downers and my uppers, right? Down lifters and up uplifters, risers, I guess. And those are in sub five, okay? Now, um, sub number four, industry drums. Um, in that, I have, you go to track edit, that is mono. I have it set to mono. So uh, some of these hits are quite long. I've got the en envelopes turned down on these. And furthermore, I got it so no two hit at the same time. If one starts, the next one cuts them off, okay? That's how I got it. So let's go back to Matrix, okay? Um, these subs, they go to different, um, uh, they go to different groups. One thing that I have for sure is on the industry, uh, on drums one, which is uh, a stock drum kit, the future bass drum kit, one of the future bass drum kits. I don't even know which one. Let's hear it. Um, anyway, that, if you go to the mixer and effects, I've got the maximizer that comes with drums um, that are stock in a, in a Kai by default. I just left it on there. Sometimes I remove it and, and do my own processing of the drums to make them punchy and loud, but in this case it's fine. And then I have the Mother Ducker input, so that's going to be what the rest of the Mother Duckers uh, basically um, are side chained to. Okay? Now here I have an electric piano on track four. Um, all of these are just hype. Um, or, um, what's going on? Let's go to Matrix. Yeah, you see this is a hype synth. It's soft ambient bell preset, and I may have um, augmented it a little. Um, it's difficult for me to figure out where to save my presets in here, and et cetera, et cetera. Pulse bass, that's, uh, oh, come on. Uh, that's hype as well. In fact, uh, let's just use this select down here. <coughs> Tube synth, uh, that's the next one. Uh, the Reese bass is hype. The noise arp steamy plug from Tube Synth, and you can see that they're basically just the stock plugins. Okay, so back in the mixer, we're in the effects section. The Reese, I have a little bit of fuzzy distortion on there, and I've got a little bit of filter. Okay, and I don't augment those during the performance; they just stay there. Okay, I wanted those to be on the Reese alone, so I didn't put those on the bus group, for instance. Right, that e piano, I put a compressor on there just to give it a little lift and squash. Uh, make it cut through the mix a little bit better, but again, I didn't want to put that compressor on all of the highs, right? But if I go to master down here, 
And I go to the mixer, you'll see that submix, um, let's go all the way to the, the left, you can hold shift and use the arrow. I've got a compressor on the base, that's a, a compressor on all of the base, that's submix 1, I can rename that base if I want, but some bug actually keeps it from staying renamed when I reopen the file, blah blah. I've also got the mother ducker, which means that this mother ducker is going to be taking its signal from the drums like we talked about already. Number two, this is the, the submix two is the high, um, high synths, etc., all the leads and everything. Only a mother ducker on there, okay? Submix three, that's the drums, nothing on there. Submix four, I've got the stutter, okay? That's submix four, if you remember, is that industry kit that I just showed you that I, I made, and uh, I've got the stutter on there. Submix five and six, nothing, okay? Now, let's go to the returns. On the return one, right, I have reverb. Now, here's why I use a return and not just put the reverb on the track. It's because I want the tail. I want to be able to send it to the reverb and to hit real hard and the tail to continue to fade when I turn the send off, okay? If you just fade the mix up on a single track, you fade the mix back down, you don't hear the tail of the reverb, etc., etc., or the, or, or the delay. It also helps uh, me to only uh, save CPU, saves power and everything, um, decreases the chances of, of hiccups if uh, I don't have to add so many effects. I can just uh, send these, I even send the drums to these sends and returns, right? And I'll show you how I have the macro set up for that. The air reverb, I've got it on the Cathedral preset, okay, which is a 9.7 second time, right? That's a long tail. And I've got the mix only at 27%. So if I throw something on there full blast, boom, it hits it 27% mixed and it fades out a long time. That's what I want, right? So if we go back, on return number two, I've got the air delay. I've got the preset called dotted eighth delay, okay? And I've got the feedback up 50% and I have the mix at 84% this time. I want it to really, I want to hear those echoes, right? But the time, instead of a dotted eighth, I've changed it to a dotted quarter note, okay? Now, if I go to the main outputs where everything's going out, I've got XY effects and obviously that is a beat repeat, okay? Now the beat repeat low pass filter. The X axis here, that is the filter. I don't use the filter so I have that thing all the way open, okay? And I've got the enable off so you're not hearing any beat repeat unless I activate it with my macros, okay? Now let's talk about how I have the macros set up. And these are weird, I have macros on the knobs, and then I have macros on the pads, okay? We'll, we'll cover the knobs first. Let's go to menu, macros, down here, okay? Submix two is the send one on submix two. In fact, if I go to mixer, if we go to sends, you'll see all the way over, in submix 5, I have the sends uh, for the reverb all the way up. Um, that's for the risers and uh, for risers and downlifters. I have the echo halfway up. That just gives me some extra pump. That's fine, right? And you can see that I have um, number one, submix one, if, submix one, if you remember, is the bass. I'm never going to send the bass to reverb or delay, so I don't even have that set up. So the first two here is send one, which is Submix two, that's all the highs and leads, right? That goes to reverb. And as you can see, I don't have that momentary. It means that wherever I set it, it stays there until I turn it down. Same with submix two, which is going to the delay, to the echo, right? Now, submix three is the drums, okay? And knob number three and four, I have sent to the drums reverb. And as you can see, all I have to do is touch it, it goes to zero decibels all the way, 100%, right, wet, and then I let go. So that's a momentary toggle is what that is. I'll show you how that's set up. And then knob number four is the echo, same way. So I can just mostly send hi-hats and snares to this. I try not to send the kick drums to reverb and, and uh, um, echo during a performance, etc. Okay? This macro knob here, um, I got to check and try to remember what that is. <laughs> This macro knob is set to the timing of the stutter. If you go back to effects, you remember I have the stutter on submix number four, which is that industry drum kit. And if you go into the stutter, you'll see that I have the timing, the intervals, okay, set to this knob. And it's not a momentary knob or a toggle. It goes and it stays where I put it, 
okay? Here's the interesting thing about the stutter. The stutter is literally a beat repeat, okay? But it has some other functionality that the XY um, pad, um, XY effects beat repeat doesn't have, and that's number one, the intervals are, are smaller. Well, it's not, not smaller, but you can set how many steps that they continue to repeat, okay? You can set the length of the steps, right? That's very important. You can freeze these suckers. And basically when you find a good stutter, make it go on until infinity if you turn that off or, uh, or until you turn it off. Um, I've got my mix all the way down because I have that set to the pad macros. I'll show you that in a second. It also has a pitch mod, okay? And the pitch mod is, uh, it's either all the way, uh, I have it all the way down or all the way up. I'll show you how that works. But the pitch mod makes the stutters rise or fall in pitch. Uh, that's kind of amazing. Okay, so back to the macros. In the macro knobs, I've got uh, the stutter here. That is, so you can see the air stutter interval. That's the timing of the stutters, okay? Now, over here, I have the XY effects for the main output. And all this does is enable that beat repeat on the master bus, and this is the timing, okay? So I can turn it up or turn it down. Now, another momentary toggle, okay? How that works is you set it to the value that you want it, okay? Uh, you set the, the plug-in, in this case the XY effects. I've got it turned all the way off. I don't, I don't have it enabled. And then you hit momentary. And what that means is that as soon as you crank that knob up, it's gonna turn on, but when you let go, it's gonna snap back to the state that you saved it in when you turned when you when you turned on momentary. Okay. Furthermore, you get a little, you get some extra parameters down here. I have it on toggle. And what that means is that I can touch it and I can let go and it snaps back. If it was on off, I would turn it up and it would stay on. Well, oh, it's weird how they have these things. Um, <laughs> it's it's bugging out on me, but trust me, turn it on toggle, you touch it, it turns all the way up, and you let go, and it turns it all the way off, okay? Let me try turning momentary off, and uh, oh, toggle, toggle on, toggle off, toggle on, toggle off, off, just turns it on, and waits till I turn it off, okay? Trigger max means I turn it on, and it stays on, I can't even turn it off, okay? So I have it set to momentary toggle. All right. So, um, in the pa uh, knobs number 9 through 16, I've got a few as well, okay? This macro here goes to send 2 and 1 of the, hmm, well, let's find out. I can't remember what I'm sending here. It, it might just be, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I haven't used this. <laughs> I set this macro up and I, don't, I didn't use it live so, or when I played the performance, so I can't remember. However, this knob is set to the hype synth that does the arp, arpeggio bass, and it is the, I'll tell you what, I'll play it for you. Turn to stop all. Arpeggio bass, the pulse bass, you hear that? It's just the filter. Let's see if this does nothing. Yeah, I don't know what I set that to. Down here is submix 5, that sends uh, 5 uh, to the, um, if you remember, they were all the way wet. If I went to adjust the effects level, but I, I haven't messed with this either, so I, I didn't need to. Okay, so I turn this down. Let's go to macro pad grid, okay? Now these pads down here, to get your clips here, you go to launch. I've got all my clips. I can launch my clips from here, right? Um, if I hit launch again, excuse me, if I hit knobs, uh, note and launch, it takes me to where I can play notes, and I get the the, um, the launch screen. Fact is, I don't need that, okay? What I need is just to be able to see the um, macros, okay? Now, I've got a whole new set of macros over here, bank B, okay? When you saw me perform, I had note launch and knobs hit at the same time, which gives me the notes, which I didn't use at all, and it gives me the macros. I had it set this way just so this is convenient with my right hand, okay? So anyway, let's go to right here. These down here are the stutter on the um, 
on submix number five, that industry drum track. So if we stop everything and we go to where we see the industry drum track, where are you at? Right here. Okay, hear it playing. So this is the on and off of the stutter right here. Now, as you can see, it's not momentary, but I have it set because it's a pad, it goes zero to 100%, okay? And if I go back, if you remember, uh, knobs eight through 16, this is the interval, so listen. Timing, okay? This knob here changes it from sync to a free millisecond, uh, a free, free stutter in milliseconds, listen. And then I have the freeze button. That yeah, seems to be glitching out on me a little bit, okay? Nonetheless, over here, I've got the, this toggles on and off the, um, this toggles on and off the, um, um, oh, the pitch, the pitch follow in the stutter, so listen. Yep, I can turn that on and off. Okay, now, these four buttons here, okay, this is a little different. If we go back to the, um, let's, let's stop all clips, let's hear these drums. This is, these are set to the global pitch of the stock drum kit that I have in here. So, right, so if we go to Matrix, drums, and um, this is one of the stock kits, it's the uh, Future Bass Kit, like I mentioned earlier, right? Now let's listen to it, okay? And that's, you can see the notes over here, right? If I just hit note, you can see which ones are being played, okay? Now these four I set to, if you go to menu, go to track edit, in the global, I have those set to the semitones of all the hits, global hits. And I have this far left, uh, far right one here is up 20 semitones. So the up 20 notes, up 10 notes, down 10 notes, down 20 notes. So this is, controls pitch in real time. And if you go back to the macros, you'll see that I have these set to momentary so that they go, they, they change the pitch while I'm holding them down. I let them up, it goes back to, to zero. Now sometimes it's buggy and it gets stuck on a pitch and I have to hit another one real quick and it just goes back to normal. But let's listen. Playing normally, up to up, uh, 10 semitones. Down 20, down 10, up 20. It's powerful when you add the sends and returns. See how I got stuck? <laughs> you have to go back to normal. So that's how it works. So yeah, it's a pretty powerful uh, performance paradigm. Hopefully I wasn't too fast. Hopefully uh, you can pause and go back. Sometimes I talk real fast about things. Um, I didn't sit here and set it up in front of you. So that, that is kind of a disadvantage for trying to learn, but this is a very powerful way of performing, right? Notice uh, I didn't use these. Like I was saying, so if you if I had just used launch and knobs, that gives you um, 32 pads of <laughs> of uh, effects parameters that you can pound out in real time. 
could do some crazy, crazy Richard Divine type stuff. But anyway, love you guys. Hope everything is good. Go to GhostWrittenClips.com and get some free expansions for the Force. Um, I've got new stuff coming, like I said. And uh, I hope everyone uh, got something out of this. Be blessed.